Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? This is BC. Welcome back to another episode of Supreme Being. Shout out to Team BC. All right, if you guys are interested, you need help with real estate, contact me or anybody on my nationwide team. Investment side, the regular traditional side, if you're interested, you can go to jointeambc.com or message me as well if you'd like to join. Also, shout out to Modern Success, my coaching program. Anything and everything else that I have to offer is on briancasella.com. You have the coaching section, the product section. Everything is there for you guys to check out, which I recommend always. All right, let's start this particular episode of Supreme Being. Your darkest hour will be your finest hour. I just thought of that right now in my head because as cliche as going through the tough times and the challenges is, I think a lot of people don't talk about it in detail and really give a deep dive that can be beneficial to people because it's just oh, you're going to be faced with challenges and struggles and blah, 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 and that whole motivational bullshit that people regurgitate 24-7. But let's, let's explore that for a second, right? If I look at an individual, right, and everything is going good in their life, as an example, right? Everything is going good. Everything is going smooth. You don't know too much about them, right? It's when things get knocked off course. It's when they get slapped in the face with unexpected circumstances, right? It's when things are tough that the character of the person begins to become revealed. Why? Because when things go off course, whether internally or externally, right? It disrupts your rhythm. It takes more out of you to continue doing what you're doing and being who you are. It puts you under different circumstances emotionally, under stress, a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of pressure. How do you respond when it comes to that? Why? Those bring out the side of the individual that will know if they've been working on it or not. Somebody who's been through the ringer over and over, somebody who's pushed themselves tremendously, right? Emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally. If you're now presenting a situation that pushes them mentally for the 10,500th time, it's not going to affect them too much, right? They're going to be happy. If somebody never pushes themselves and then suddenly put them in that situation, it's going to be tough. This is why typically you see individuals like myself, and this is just generally speaking, when we transition from athletics, like high-level athletics, to something like sales or another industry that similarly, in a sense, want somebody who's competitive or wants people who push you know themselves or who are used to you know pushing themselves or being in uncomfortable situations and 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 having pressure on them right we tend to thrive a little bit better and it facilitates our progress in those types of industries right generally speaking right i would say it's actually probably the exception to the rule because i know a ton of people who are athletes who did and switch to a career like mine, and they gave up immediately or gave up soon after uh, starting, right? But I'm just speaking generally here. Looking back, man, I mean, let's, let's go into some examples for me. I mean, you know, my first year in real estate from a mental standpoint was horrific. I had a lot of ups and downs. I had three moments within my first six months where I literally broke down in tears by myself in my car, right? Because what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. I felt like I was basically being a little bitch, playing the victim. This is bullshit. I'm putting in the work. How was so-and-so getting results? And I'm not basically doing all the stuff that I've been preaching to all of you for years not to do, right? So you can learn from my, uh, my mistakes. Man, it sucked. Man, did it not feel. Even thinking about it right now and evoking those feelings and emotions sucks. Doesn't feel good pretty shitty, right? Now, before we get deeper into that, looking back, this is the top down perspective. Now, this is the, um, I'm, you know, projecting from the future now to the past. I'm so glad all of that happened. I'm so glad all of that happened. Why? Because it forced me as an individual to be placed at a crossroads. Am I going to become who I need to become, do what I need to do, continue doing what I said I was going to do? Or am I going to do what everybody else does and quit? Am I going to walk away? 
and then become the what if story. Like you've seen so many countless times. You probably know a ton of people like that in your life. Even people with tremendous potential that you look at and you're like, man, you have potential of 10 and your life is like a one or a two. That's sad. Wasted potential. Wasted opportunities. I said, no, this is not going to get easier. I need to face this shit and level up as an individual. I need to have stronger resolve. I need to have more emotional intelligence. I need to be able to deal with some of this mental pressure coming from the career that I've never felt before. It's going to require me to upgrade and present a new version of me. My plate is a little bit more full. I either need to stack better on my plate or create a bigger plate. I need to figure this thing out because there's no quitting in me. There's no going back. Otherwise, everything I've wanted, everything I said that I was going to do and become and achieve is out the window because now you're deviating from the path. You're giving up. You're throwing in the towel. You do not fail. This is why I don't believe in the word failure. The moment you fail is when you decide, when you quit. That's when you failed. If you're still in the game and you have not quit, you have not failed. Why? Failure is a finite state, meaning it's a state that's achieved. If you have not quit or decided to stop, how can you have failed? You see what I mean? Especially on your journey. It's your journey. It's your goals, right? Everybody's different. You set out to do this, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right? Until you say, I'm done, and you throw in the towel, that's when me or someone else, even though I would never do it to you, but for the example, I or anybody can point to you and say, you failed or you're a failure, right? Then at that point, we can say, technically, it's legitimate that someone or you would say that. Until that point, we can't tell you anything. You can tell people, I haven't failed. I'm not a failure. I haven't stopped. I'm not done yet. How can you say I'm a failure? You can say I haven't achieved X, Y, Z or ABC yet. Can't say I'm a failure though. Because that would mean the game is over. Is the game over? No, I'm still in the game playing right now. That's the beauty of this thing, ladies and gentlemen. And I would, I would remind myself that all the time. That's what the, the older heads and the mentors that I had would tell me everyone's going to hit that crossroads. And so are you, are you going to quit? You're going to keep going. The ones who succeed are just simply the ones who keep taking one step forward every day. There's no magic formula. There's nothing special, but it's through those dark times. Like I mentioned earlier, me being in tears, being right at the finish line. When you think that client's going to sign and they don't, or they sign and then they cancel and you're like, fuck, I'm right there. What the fuck? This sucks. Right. But that forces you to dig deep. That forces you to upgrade without those bumps in the road, without those challenges, right? You never grow. Why? It forces you to confront a portion of yourself that maybe you haven't in a long time, or you've never confronted Two, because it deviates from your path. It forces you to level up in the sense that now you can handle different circumstances. How are you going to gather experience if nothing ever deviates from your expectations or doesn't work out? That's how you become a man a woman or a person of experience and skill and versatility and ability is through that, through deviations and changes. It's not that it's bad. It's a deviation. It's a point for you to learn from. It's a circumstance that occurred that maybe you didn't expect or didn't want, but you can still move forward from it and learn from it and grow from it. You can still get to where it is that you want to go. It's just the path slightly deviated. Big deal. Big deal. Figure it out. That's going to force you to grow and add to your, your skill set to achieve it, right? Think of the people who follow me. Many of you are business people, salespeople, realtors, right? How many of your transactions or sales have ever been slam dunk perfect, nothing wrong happened? I can think of very few, but it's through the ones that were the craziest that I learned the most. Now, in the moment, did it suck going through them? Absolutely, dude. Nobody likes going through that, especially emotionally. But through that, you learn that you cause your own emotional distress 99% of the time. You let people get to you. You let circumstances get to you. How do you get better? How do you learn? How do you improve your emotional intelligence and control and responses? Well, by going through shit that forces you to work on it. And if these events never happen, if the dark times never occur, man, I mean, think about you know, being somewhere like here, I'm in Miami, right? The sun. I've lived and been in climates where 
it's cloudy all day and the sun doesn't come out for days or you never see it or it's cold and snowy, right? Makes you appreciate the sun more. Same thing with the people who live here year round who have been here their whole lives and they go to the mountains and see the snow, they appreciate it because where they live, they don't see it, right? There's no happiness without, you know, sadness. There's no north without south. There's no sunset without sunrise. We need these, these, these polar opposites in order to, number one, confirm the existence of the other side, but number two, appreciate them and see them for what they really are. So as you're moving along, once you start achieving these things and handling these dark times and growing from them and getting better, you appreciate the path that you've been on. This is why I can look at anybody, regardless of where they're at, at my level, behind me or ahead of me, and appreciate the people who are at it every single day, because I know what it takes to do that over and over, and I've proven it. And the ones who keep going day after day after day after day after day after day are the ones who build that strength and that character and resolve within them. We really, really see it, and we've experienced it. Would I trade it for a resistance-free path? No. I wouldn't be half the man that I am today. I wouldn't be anywhere near where I'm at today. I wouldn't have the capabilities that I have today. I wouldn't be half the teacher that I am today. I wouldn't be half the student that I am today. I wouldn't be half the success that I am today. In fact, I desire more challenges and more, in quotes, tough times and bumps in the road and obstacles because it's only going to make me better. And I trust myself to get through it. I want insecurities and issues to be revealed to me so I can handle them. Give it all. I enjoy this. This is a part of the process. I've just shifted my perspective on it. Because once you're swimming in the deep end for a long time, you get accustomed to it. You begin to appreciate it. You don't look at it as this perilous, scary, you know, obstacle and thing that it was before. You see it for what it really is. It's just the deep end. It just is. You made it scary. You made it all crazy and, and, you know, razor spikes and cold and fire and all the stuff, right? You're the one that acted like there was lava there when there really wasn't. You created the lava in your mind. So looking back, man, th th those are the key pivotal moments in my life, in my career, in my path, the segues that really catapulted me to those next levels or revealed that that weak link that I needed to work on at that time to break through to the next level, right? Or to access a part of me that I had not accessed yet. It forced me to grow and level up. I've said many times that you're going to be presented with many times and, and circumstances and, and, and events that will be the crossroads for you, meaning the universe or whatever you believe in is presenting to you the next level and saying, if you're prepared, this is the next level. And if you're not, you need to learn the lesson and grow. That way, when you're presented with the next one, you're ready to grab it, seize it, and take it and move to the next level and the next level and the next level. Who knows where this leads? Who knows where the end is? I don't. But I keep going down the path. And I want more of these situations presented to me. I want to be tested. I want people and circumstances and life and the world and the government to test me, please. So I can continue to demonstrate to myself, most importantly, but also to the world and the people around me that I am a man of my word, that I am a man of character, of principle, of values, of growth, of achievement, and all the things that I talk about and teach that I'm an, literally an embodiment of those things. This is my way to prove it to everybody and put it into practice and demonstration. These are the people that we end up respecting the most. These are the people that get the farthest, even within this societal race of making money and success and all this other stuff, which that's not what it's all about, but it's a piece of the puzzle for sure. But man, w without those hard times, what do we got? That's what's behind the guy who drives a Lamborghini or who has the gazillions of dollars or the meddled prize fighter, or whoever it is. It's all the tough times in the gym, behind the scenes, knocking on the doors, making the calls, busting your ass, practicing, and all the other stuff. 
we know that that's behind it. We may not be able to in the moment see all of it, but we know behind the gold medal and this and that was a tremendous sacrifice. Same thing with the man who has a ton of confidence when he speaks. We know he bombed a lot of speeches. We knew he spent thousands of hours perfecting his craft, like I have in many, many areas. We know the person who has a chiseled physique has been working hard, diligently, and we can appreciate that. So no matter which way we slice it or look at it, those dark times, you make them darker for sure, but they're required for everybody because it's not always rainbows and sunshine. Just as much as there is light in the day, there's also darkness. I'm shooting this podcast at 7.21 p.m. here. It's dark in Miami. Sun won't come up until tomorrow around 7. 6 or 7. We have just as much daytime as we do nighttime. You're going to go through the same thing in your life. The question is, is do you approach the nighttime crying and complaining? Or do you say, hey, I'm going to go through the nighttime. Let's make the most of it and let's enjoy it. Because we're going to have night every day. Nighttime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime. That's the cycle. That's the seasons of life. So in closing, we want to remove the resistance to these things. We know this is an inevitable part of our journey, yet we continue to resist it. When you deny and resist things that innately are going to happen that you cannot stop, you suffer as a human being. And that's what we do. And that's what we do. And that's why we suffer. The root of the majority of your suffering is that. You're resisting something that if you just let go of the resistance, wouldn't bother you as much. I don't want to be embarrassed in front of people when I speak. Then you're never going to be a good speaker. Who cares? Embarrass yourself and see that it's not that bad. Because everyone else feels the same way and everybody else goes through the same thing. I don't want to, you know, this and that. Let go, dude. Let go. It's only your own issue. And the more you start to let go of those insignificant things, you'll literally be ripping out the weeds that are in the depths of your garden, stopping you from blossoming as a human being and living not only successfully and all the other stuff that you want, but just a grounded, fulfilled, pleasant existence, which, man, let me tell you, is great. It is great. It changes life 1,000% for the better. And that's ultimately what you want. You don't want to be a puppet on strings. You don't want to be the reactive one. You don't want to be on that side of the equation. You've been there. So have I, you may still be there. Now you want to get on the other side and liberate yourself from a lot of these things that have been just drilled into us mentally since we were born. It's worth it. My friends, it's worth it, but it requires a lot, a lot of work and suffering and hardships. So put on your hard hat grab your tools and get to work and watch stick to the plan because eventually that scale tips things start going in your favor you start noticing the development in you then things get exciting you start building momentum now we're talking but that takes time it may happen quickly it may take a while but in its due time it will happen and you will reach the destination okay That's it for this one, guys. Thank you for listening. Supreme Being, we're on every major podcast platform. If you can, leave me a review. I'd really appreciate it. BrianCasella.com for the coaching, modern success, and any other products that I offer. Message me if you need anything in real estate, buying, selling, investing. If you want to join my team, whether on the investment side or the traditional side, go to jointeambc.com and shoot us a message. All right, peace.